This week in Queens News, elected officials, community advocates, and numerous residents turned out for a rally at Queensboro Hall to show solidarity with immigrants in the wake of President Donald Trump's executive orders on immigration. Speakers included everyone from Queensboro President Melinda Katz and Congress members Jeffrey Meeks and Tom Swazi to Imam Shamsi Ali of the Jamaica Muslim Center and Rabbi Jerry Skolnick, who blew a chauffeur horn, which is a call to awakening before Rosh Hashanah. We are 130 languages. We are 120 countries. We are proud. We are diverse. We pray to our gods. We celebrate our parents' traditions. And we do it right here in the borough of Queens because that is what America is all about, Katz told the crowd. In other news, former Queensboro President Helen Marshall has died at age 87 in California, where she moved after leaving office in 2013. Marshall, who was the first African American and second woman to hold the post, was remembered as a trailblazer by former colleagues for her work with the borough's schools, libraries, parks, arts, and culture. Marshall began began her career as a teacher before becoming the first director of Corona's Langston Hughes Library in 1969. Five years later, she entered politics as a Democratic district leader and went on to serve on the state assembly from 1983 to 1991, the city council from 1992 to 2001, and as Queensboro president from 2002 to 2013. And Queens District Attorney Richard Brown gave more than $20 million in settlement funds to the city's police department to support community policing in the borough. The funds will support the NYPD's implementation of a number of law enforcement initiatives in Queens and pay for new cars, technology, and training. The funds, which will be distributed throughout the borough's 16 police precincts, are provided by the DA's office as part of the historic 2012 HSBC Holdings Agreement, in which the Banking and Financial Services Organization admitted to money laundering and sanctions violations and agreed to forfeit $1.25 billion as part of a deferred prosecution agreement with the U.S. Department of Justice. And that's this week's news in Queens.